Freddy Mahumani. Yeah. Uh, just a bit of history about uh, myself. Uh, my career started at Novel South Africa. Oh. I was a product inspect for them, um, and then I moved to um, the corporate sector, Momentum, um, IGBT, FND, Vodacom. Um, right now, I'm with APSA consulting for them and running or heading their DevOps um, big data engineering team. So the team is started around uh, the Czech Republic, um, uh, Cape Town, Randberg, Bank City, um, sorry, um, Tapsa Towers in Johannesburg, um, and also in Sentin at Slane. So we make sure that, um, so what my team is responsible for is to make sure that everything that gets produced by the data engineering team for APSA, um, it's basically deployed at a very fast rate. Um, we we'll make sure that we implement the correct open source tools um, and we make sure that our uptime is 99.999%. Um, so yeah, so if anything from your checks and balances from APSA, if, if our team is not performing, then um, you guys won't be able to, anyone who's using uh, the uh, APSA digital um, platform won't be able to, to do anything. All right, just to break down my, 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 my topic today or the subject here at hand. Um, so just to give it a definition, everybody knows, and I assume everyone will know what Linux is. Um, it, it, it's an operating system and it's an open source system as well. But I want to dive a, a, a bit deep into the definition of DevOps. What, what is DevOps um, really? If you Google DevOps, it will tell you that it's a methodology that's used to produce software. It comes with standards and, and, and all of that. But th that's not uh, a clear definition. Hence, if you go to different um, companies, you find that different companies have their own definition of what DevOps is. And the mistake that companies make is that they tend to define DevOps based on their current processes or strategy or methodology within a company. And that's the wrong way of defining DevOps. What DevOps is, it's, it, it's a standard that uses defined processes and driven by the corporate culture. Keywords there, culture processes. When you define DevOps, don't define it to suit um, your, your standards or your strategy for business because then you're losing the whole beginning set of your, of, of your DevOps transition is lost. Immediately, if you make that mistake when you try to define your DevOps and communicate it to your, um, to, 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 to the, to your colleagues or to anyone within the, the, the industry, you, you've already lost them. Secondly, you, you might have noticed that in my definition of DevOps, I didn't include any um, word um, that, that talks to the tools. That's another mistake that we make in the industry. We seem to think that DevOps is about tooling. So if I'm using a certain tool that's included in the DevOps process, I therefore, um, my, my transition for DevOps is complete and I'm a, I'm a DevOps friendly environment. But that's not the case. DevOps has nothing to do with the tools. The tools happen to be there to fast track the process and to help the culture of building your, 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 your software. So it's not necessarily that if you implement your tools from your point, from point A to point Z up until you release the software, that you are therefore DevOps friendly. And we're gonna talk more about it. Um, Okay, seems I have to go manual with this one. There you go. All right, and to talk to that, I want to um, come to the SME part. So, most of you here, or some of you here, might be subject matter experts. And I want to talk to you today regarding this, um, regarding DevOps as well. But another thing that we tend to forget is that we still have small, medium enterprises, especially in South Africa who are writing their own code, who are producing software and all of that, can they also use DevOps? Yes, they can. So DevOps is not only for the big corporate. DevOps is, can work as well for the small medium enterprise. Um, you might be um, 
with some companies like APSA, you might find that um, within the, 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 the big environment, they have a small medium enterprise, which is ran by an entrepreneur. Not an entrepreneur, but an entrepreneur. So it's somebody that is like, they can give in a budget to drive the innovation, to drive the transition. So you might find that within, even within your, your, your space at work, there is that small group set of people that are, are tasked to improve whatever primary product that you pro you're producing, to invest investigate the product, to market it, and all of that. And, and those are small, medium enterprises within a big company. So let's not assume that within our company or corporate, we don't have a small, medium enterprise. We do. And it starts by understanding what DevOps is. Because now DevOps is, remember, the culture. So depending on what culture we're using, therefore we will um, fully understand where we, we're going with this. All right, so at the end of, of, of this um, talk, I will take um, questions. If you can just, um, pardon me for now, let's, let's, uh, so that I don't lose my train of thought. Um, Simon Sinek, I'm sure some of you might have heard of him. He, he came up with a golden circle. And today I want to take the very same analogy that he used and use it um, in, our, in, our, in this DevOps presentation. And I call it the golden circle of DevOps. Why do we need a golden circle of DevOps? Um, we all know that people don't necessarily um, buy what you do. They buy why you do it. So you need to clearly define your why. And, and, and your why will become your, motiv your motivation here. And then your how, which is your processes. As you, you could tell from my definition of DevOps, I included processes, all right? And then the what, what product you're trying to build. Another mistake that we make in the industry is we go to our, um, so we, we as business, we go and we tell the subject matter expert could be a developer, a uh, project manager, um, a product owner, and we say, listen, we want our product to work like this. This is what we want. Can you please go and tell them how to do it? And they go and tell the people how to do it. People are not motivated. They don't know why they're doing it. They don't buy into what you, you're doing. Um, they don't care about it. So they wake up in the morning, they go to work, they do whatever they do, they go and have coffee, um, and, and, and they're not improving. And what, why is it so critical that you define your why? Because if I know why I'm doing it, therefore, I'm able to innovate. Because if you clearly define it to me and you say, listen, Fred, this is why we want this product to work, like this way. I can go and say, all right, I'm going to develop the product, and while developing it, I can try and come up with a way. Remember, I'm a subject matter expert here. I can try and come up with a way, a better way of doing things. I can then innovate within that product. I can build it the way you want, but I can use different processes. But if you don't tell me why I'm doing this, or you don't define it very well for me, then I'm lost. I will only follow your processes. I'll only do what you're telling me to do. Three years down the line, I leave the business. I, there's nothing, I don't feel like I've, I've done anything. I, I had any input in it. Do you understand it? And that's, that's, that's another thing that, that, that's very critical in this, um, um, in this sense for ourselves. All right, let's, let's then answer the why. Why do, we, why do I have to... Um, okay, does it seem to work very well? Why transition? Why do we need the transition? So I, I, I have been consulting for quite some time now with different companies around the implementation of DevOps. And everyone comes with their own motivation. Okay? Every time I, I, I speak to them and I ask, why do you want to um, transition? Why do you want to go the DevOps route? Give you a whole long story. But what I did was I, I then looked at each and every story that they have given me and I took out the common denominator within all these companies. And number one, they say, I want to instantly adapt. That's why they want to transition. 
because we live in a digital age, you cannot um, be able to, to, to not adapt very quickly. It needs to be instant. All right? You can't um, kill your business while you're trying to transform. All right? Which is what happened to um, BBM. They tried to adapt instantly and they couldn't adapt. So they now, the business, they had to fall back a bit and try other avenues. And what happened to BBM? The app is still there, but no one is using it because they can't instantly um, adapt to the change. To meet customer demands, how you do business today will drastically change on how we do business in the future. But who drives us to change? It's our customers. All right? So we need to know, number one, what our customers want. Before we go and, and develop all these products, what problem are you solving? Are we doing it to solve a problem, or are we just doing it because we need to be out there and we need to sell and there seems to be a market for it? So we need to be very clear that um, whatever we're doing, we're doing to meet our customer demands. And that's, that's, that was one um, other point in that, um, in that story that, they, they, uh, that this corporate were giving me. Another one, achieve competitive advantage. It's one thing to, to be competitive, but it's another thing to have a competitive advantage. Do you understand? Everyone competes with Asian Bolt. All right? But how he trains, his heart, his build, the way he takes off, the science of, of, of his finish and all of that, that's his competitive advantage. And when you have the advantage, it means you have the upper hand. Do you understand it? So we cannot just compete. They want to have the advantage. Again, BBM were competing with WhatsApp, with Slack, Rocket Chat, you name it. All right? They did not have the advantage. And that's why today they're not there. All right. And then the last one is start looking at IT as part of business and not a support function. That's another um, expect that business are starting to see now. Say, wait a minute. I fully understand we have developers. They build our business, but let's not put them in the basement anymore. Let's start um, engaging with them. Let's start having IT town hall. Let's start having conferences, and let's hear what they have to say. Um, and, and, and that's why now, that's where we are right now, and that's why even today we're here, because business re realize that actually IT are not just providing support. They are actually now an income generator. All right. But who should transition? Who within the business should transition into the DevOps uh, process? Um, developers. Why do you need to transition? Why do you need to change your mindset in the way you develop your software? It's so that you can work very well with operations. Okay? So, developers, operations, you actually one team. Okay? You producing your product, you're giving it to someone to say, listen, take this product and put it out there, let people use it. But please make sure that my product is always available. If there is any errors in my product, I want to know as soon as possible. So, we need to work together. But wait a minute. How sure am I, as an ops person, that what you're giving me is of high quality? I don't want to just take your product. I do trust you, but I don't want to just take your product and put it into my production environment, and then later on realize that there is a lot of bugs, and I give you a downtime, and we start fighting. So I also need to change my mindset. Did your product pass QA? Does it have quality assurance? I normally say each and every release should have a release certificate. That's how critical it is. 
if it didn't go through QA, even if it's a, you're changing font in your system, it should go through QA. There should be quality assurance. So the quality assurers need to transform as well, to start thinking in a DevOps way. You need to understand that you're the man in the middle. You cannot pass me something as an ops uh, that's not work properly working or properly tested. And also, you need to make sure that what Dev is giving you is actually the, the, the newest code or is the current code that's supposed to go to production. You cannot keep on testing the same version and you don't even know you're testing the same version and you give it to me and we do a release and you realize, wait a minute, um, we're supposed to change this connection. It's still connecting to the old database. And QA tells you, no, but it was working. Yes, it worked because you, you were testing an old um, using the old IP address or the old connection. So it is very critical that all these three are aligned. And that's where DevOps plays a big role. We bring the three together. A lot of people might have told you DevOps is all about the development team and the operations team. And that's, I'm missing it, missing the point. It's not about that. All these three are together. As, 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 as we, we start to transition and, and um, innovate, um, we, we will start seeing things like your DevSecOps, your ops, which I'll talk to later, and all of that. But everything comes from DevOps. Now the critical question comes. How do I do it? How do I transition? It's good. I've defined what DevOps is, I have a clear definition. I've communicated to the stakeholders that needs to understand what DevOps is. I'm ready now to start building in a DevOps way. How do I do it? Simple. Open source software. The most critical part here, or where we're going with the future, Back in the days, people were scared to use open source software because they will tell you, we don't have enough support. There's not enough budget. All the smart people are not writing software, um, open source software, and there was a, a lot of stories around open source software. The world has shifted. Today, you post a question on, Git, on, on GitLab, about GitLab. Within 24 hours, you will get a reply. And what's nice about it is that if you're in a different location and your time zone is different, it even works well for you. Because you can post a question right now, you're going to go to sleep, when you wake up in the morning, you have an answer. So it's working very well. So the, the support that we're receiving from the open source community, it's humongous now. A lot of companies are investing in open source. All the big corporates are, are investing in open source. Your Amazon, your Google, Everyone is going, we want to do open source. If it's not open source, they will tell you we're at least doing a freemium. So I will give you, you can use my product for 50 users for free. If you need to escalate and have more users and maybe add um, a few options like what GitLab does, you can pay um, a few a few rands or a few dollars. But most companies are now um, using the open source culture as well. And, and it makes it easy for, 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 for DevOps to implement DevOps and it makes it cheaper. Why is that? I want to talk to DevOps tools now. And let's use the, the I'm, I'm only talking to the open source DevOps tools. I'm not going to touch your, sorry if Microsoft is here, but I just want to stick to these ones for today. I have what we call COPS. Um, DevOps way, check ops. All right? So, one big problem that I've seen with, with everyone I've consulted with is WhatsApp. In the next year or two, WhatsApp will start leaking a lot of security data. Because right now, a lot of companies are getting hacked using social hacking, social engineering. And that is done because people feel very free to communicate, especially on WhatsApp, because you have that social feeling. Um, when, when, when you have that, it's like you're going out for drinks and, and, and 
and, and, and you're with someone and you're partying, you're having fun, you don't think about work tomorrow, right? It's only when you have to sleep and get shut. Or when you wake up in the morning, when the alarm goes off, you're like, I shouldn't have done it. That's, what, that's the, kind, the same feeling that people get on WhatsApp. That's why they, they, they now invented the delete function on WhatsApp. Because a lot of people were making mistakes and sending you videos they shouldn't be sending you. Chat, forwarding chat messages that they shouldn't be forwarding to you. Why is it a problem? Why is it a big problem in the industry? Number one, the policy that each and every employee uses on WhatsApp, it's not the industry policy for communication. So if you work for AFSA and you communicate with your employees via WhatsApp, when I install my WhatsApp and I accept the policy, I'm accepting WhatsApp's policy, okay? And I'm therefore gonna check using WhatsApp. There is no filter on WhatsApp. People share sensitive data. Does anyone know who deals with this department? My IP address, there seems to be something wrong with it. They post the number there. Talk to this person, here's the email address. WhatsApp went and signed a deal with Google now. Every chat will be automatically backed up on Google Drive, unlimited this space. What, what happens? All the chats that you go through, all these groups, they're getting backed up. You leave business. When you leave business, you have sensitive data. Somebody has sent you documents. People share architecture diagrams. They share innovation ideas over WhatsApp. Whoever added you on WhatsApp, becomes your responsibility. But one thing that they don't realize is that the administrator of WhatsApp, once they leave business, they hand over that, those admin rights to a colleague, to somebody that maybe who's gonna take over, but they don't hand over the why did they add you to that group? Who's on that group? How do we audit that WhatsApp group? It becomes a problem. And it's a big problem because we share sensitive data on WhatsApp. How do we solve that problem? Rocket Chat or Zulip? Rocket Chat, it does everything that WhatsApp does. It comes with mobile app, iOS mobile app, Android mobile app, connect to it via the web. The critical part, it's installed on premise. Everything that happens on rocket check, it gets stored in your servers. You can filter whatever you need to filter. You will know um, if you want you want to have an investigation, you don't have to go to a court of law, apply to see someone's phone and check their WhatsApp and see what's happening. It, it, it's all stored there for you on, um, on premise. You store history as well. So what happens is, you have a group, a support group. Somebody new joins, you add them to the group. They can go as far as the beginning, reading what, what, what has been happening. It, it, it's now becoming documentation. They are able to go through and see what kind of problems they had, how do they resolve them. You can just click, there's an attachment link, you click and it shows you all the documents that have been shared in that group. Who shared those documents? Do you understand? Then you have, we're solving a whole lot of problems now. And that is the devil's way. And why is it very critical? Because we have to have continuous communication. That's the first principle of devils. We need to continuously communicate. If we stop communicating, we're no longer doing DevOps, we failed. I need to know what you're doing. Let's stop working in silos. I need to follow up with you. Sending emails can be tedious. Because once I start drafting an email, my mindset changes. I want to become formal. I want to use the correct word. I want to use the correct language. I cannot go LOL, la la. la. I cannot call you crazy, you know. It just becomes now, we, 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 we're not even sharing what we're supposed to share in the way we should be sharing it. It's work, it's supposed to be fun. We're supposed to love what we're doing. So if everything is formal, it becomes very tedious. Infrastructure is code. 
we've noticed that a lot of industries are growing and building data centers everywhere. All right? Because you don't want to have, um, you want to fail safe or you want to fail over to be very, we shouldn't even notice that you failed. Okay? I'm still amazed that some of the big, big companies will, will, will tell you we're having problems with our app. Our batch is not processing. Why in this day and age? You should be able to switch over. Okay? And infrastructure is code, you can use Ansible. The reason why I chose Ansible is because it's currently the leading um, open source infrastructure is code too. Red Hat realized that everybody's adopting Ansible. And they're like, okay, we have Ansible Tower and we have Ansible Bare Metal, but not everyone likes the black screen, no, like some of us. They went and created Ansible AWX. Okay, now with Ansible AWX, you have Ansible Tower. So now you can click, 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 do your stuff, upload um, your YAML files, your workbooks, you already have a workbook library from Ansible. It's becoming easier and easier to do the complicated stuff. And that's because we have to adopt the transition of, 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 of the approach. Continuous integration and continuous development. Some companies will tell you continuous um, development or um, they can tell you we, we, we will integrate both into one. So we're not going to have two, two tools, we're not going to have Jenkins and GitLab or GitHub. We're going to have one. All right, and you can, if you use GitLab and you use it very wisely, you can have, have, have just one tool, okay? Why is it critical to integrate? Integration, it means that you are able to plant within different systems. You're able to work with different systems. But in a DevOps way, what does it mean? It means I'm able to work with different teams as well. So I don't only integrate my systems, but I also integrate the teams I work with. And that's the DevOps culture. I've seen people argue and fight because someone was supposed to provide a file for their system to work, but they did not provide that file. And an engineer was supposed to pick up that that file was not their sick and their own leave. And so they didn't know, so it's not their fault. So I come there and I'm shouting at you, why didn't you tell me in time? You should have somebody to monitor it. No, DevOps does not allow that. It is also your responsibility, because now you are integrated, to say, add me to your notifications. I also want to know if something goes wrong, so I can be proactive. I can prepare, because I will know what's happening, what's coming. Warn me. Use systems that can send out warnings to say, hey, your disk space, you're running out of disk space. Oh, you didn't receive this file. Your latest file is the file which was received yesterday. We're becoming smarter now because we are integrating. And we don't fight anymore. And what happens? We start to communicate. And we are able to even resolve problems a bit faster. Because if whoever does not see it, you're probably going to see it. And you're going to say, hey, guys, are you looking at this? And they're going to tell you, yeah, we've already seen that. We're looking at it. Oh, Yes, it's already resolved, just give it, give it five minutes to refresh or whatever. But you know about it. It becomes your duty as well, um, because now your, your mindset is changing and your culture is changing and you're now in, in a transition mode and you're now integrated. And you have this different, um, you have this system which, which comes with different stakeholders and all these stakeholders are now working together and the system runs smoothly. And that's very critical. So let's not think of continuous integration as a tool. Let's think of continuous integration as a culture as well. And that's the DevOps way of doing things. Desk and, and server.
always improving, we deliver faster. All right? Continuous monitoring, I've spoken about it already. But what's critical is, when I say monitoring, don't think of it as system monitoring. You need to monitor your skills. You need to monitor your culture, the behavior within the industry. If something is changing, you should be the first to know about it. I know a bank that said, we are the first bank in South Africa to implement Samsung tech. That has been happening for three years, dude. And you're telling us you're the first in South Africa, and you're proud of that. It's, it's because you are not aware, you are not continuously monitoring what you're doing. Do you get it? So continuous monitoring, we're not only talking systems, but you monitor everything that you're doing within your industry. Thank you very much for coming through. I really appreciate it. Um, I just want to leave a few minutes for, for questions. Uh, but before we ask any questions, that's my email address. That's my leadership blog. You can get me on Twitter. And that's my number. Don't buzz me, call me. <laughs> if buzz me, I won't call back. <laughs> All right, OK. Um, any questions? Yes. Um, just wondering. Just get the mic, sorry. Uh, I was just wondering, WhatsApp does have end-to-end -end encryption, whereas it seems to be in alpha with Rocket Chat, okay. not working on mobile phones. Uh, but just Google it quickly. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, is end-to-end -end encryption an important thing? Um, yeah. And yeah, WhatsApp has many weaknesses. I just don't like people bashing it because it's ubiquitous end-to-end -end encryption that everyone uses. Yeah. Okay. All right, if I, if, I, if I quickly get your question, I'm going to try and answer it very quickly. Um, so, Rocket Check does work on mobile phones, but you have to open the firewall rule. So, you have to make sure that the port where Rocket Check is running, it's open, it's whitelisted. Secondly, yes, it is end to end encryption, but what, we're not worried about that. That's not our worry when it comes to WhatsApp. Our worry is that you don't own the data, number one. Number two, it's very difficult to administrate. Number three, you cannot control what's being said there. Number four, once you leave the company, you leave with the company's data. And for us, that's a big worry. And that's why we're worried about WhatsApp. We're not saying WhatsApp is like, it's like a bad tool or it shouldn't be used at all. No, use it to communicate with family. Obviously, you need privacy as well in that regard. But in terms of business, if, they can, if you can have it on premise and we can control the data, then we'll be happy to use it. But currently, we're not. Data is the new currency. If you don't control your data, you're in danger. Yeah. All right. Any other question? No question. Thank you very much. Uh, hope to see you around. If you want to ask me a question or drop me an email or um, send me an SMS, I'm on WhatsApp as well on that number. So I can, <laughs> you can talk about certain things there. Um, all right. Thank you very much. <laughs>